Thank you, Chandra. I'm John Bowers, Director of the Institute for Energy Efficiency, and I'd like to talk about some ways that UCSV has been using the MPW process uh, within AIM. There's a number of professors listed here and students, and uh, it's a collaboration uh, of a bunch of us. There's been four main directions we focused on. The first is very high capacity interconnects. It's a collaboration with SUNY, Analog, and Siena. And there's several papers listed here, and I don't really have time to go into much detail, so uh, you can find these on, on my website or, or uh, online. Uh, second project is wavelength selective photonic switches. Again, several generations we've designed in the MPW process. Then the last two, we haven't had time to describe here today, but one is inverse design with Stanford, Professor Vukovic's group. And again, they came up with a, a novel design and uh, we laid it out in the MPW process and it worked perfectly. The final project is quantum dot lasers on silicon. So this is a, a longer term project where we're trying to integrate lasers and SOAs into the standard SUNY process. And this will hopefully be an offering in the future. So here's the first chip that we uh, have fabricated with analog photonics. It's a fairly complicated chip. It's a one terabit per second transceiver. So as you can see here, there's you know, 20 ring modulators, 10 in a, in a row. So you need very low loss, very high uniformity uh, of the rings, combined with interleavers, wavelength division multiplexers, and, uh, and polarization multiplexers. So there's a transmit side and a receive side. And then this is mated with 3D bonding to an electronic IC that, that drives the circuit. So it's fairly complex. Uh, this shows a picture of that chip, and uh, so there's lots of wire bonds. There's you know hundreds of devices. The ring resonances are tightly controlled. You can see in the right-hand side the variation across the wafer of how the resonances, say for all ring one across the wafer, they're actually quite tightly grouped. And you can see as you go from channel one through channel 20, how that varies. In the lower right, you can see a EIC that's bonded onto this pick in a 3D manner so as to drive it. So again, there's hundreds of electrical connections. It's a very high speed connections and they're very low capacitance. And uh, so it's a, it's a challenging process. The, the ring power consumption is very low, just 18 femtojoules per bit. And uh, the bump density is very high, 36 microns. So it's kind of beyond a typical uh, pick you could buy from anywhere else. The second project I want to talk about are large switches, typically crossbar switches, n by n by some number of wavelengths. And typically, uh, you get a lot more capacity by, by having WDM multiplexing on here. So rather than a single wavelength switch on the left, you go to a, a fat switch with WDM on it on, in the middle. But on the right is what's really valuable, the ability to change some number of wavelengths off each of these channels from one to the other. Now you can show that actually having ability to change just two wavelengths per cross point is, is sufficient in almost all real applications. That gives you low latency and low blocking in the switch. So again, uh, the number of rings here could be quite large as, as n by n gets large and the number of wavelengths gets large. And in this case, we have two rings per, per crossbar and that's per, per wavelength. And that's because we want flat tops and, and steep so slopes in the side. We've also integrated here our wavelength monitors on all the waveguides. And so that allows us to monitor how the rings are aligned with uh, the, the wavelength resonances. So again, it's self-standing and we don't need an external wavelength source to do that. Here's a picture of what one of those chips looks like. So again, very dense array of, of rings in the center here, uh, three levels of metal and uh, pads around the outside. And again, it was fabricated in AIM came out in standard uh, time, on, on time, and with actually quite high yield. And this shows one of these uh, picks uh, packaged up over here in the side. So again, the path through here, depending upon which one you go out, uh, gets longer and longer. And so you see the path loss increase, and then as you go back to the shorter path, it goes down. The really important point here is that the loss per element is quite low, less than a dB. So again, it's very, very high quality. Uh, structures. What you can see in this slide is the variation, for instance, in resonant wavelength across the uh, different chips. 
And again, um, quite tight grouping of the resonance wavelengths, which means we only need very small tuning to put them on, on resonance. This shows the experiments where we put 60 gigabaud data through this optical switch. And uh, so it's again, you know, it's PAM4, so it's aggregate 111 gigabit per second. And uh, again, we can get below the, the hard fact limit uh, with this structure. So to summarize, we're making really very complex picks with hundreds of devices integrated together. The PDK performed as expected flawlessly. Delivery was on time. Performance is actually quite good, 60 gigabaud per second from the modulators and detectors. And we've used this to integrate together to achieve a one terabit per second transceiver. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to, to work on this uh, MPW project.